Hey guys, welcome back to the FIFA 23 Brighton career mode. And again, um, I'm sorry that this is another late upload. Just uh, kind of got into a car accident earlier, but everything is good. So, but I'm back, but I'm a little bit late than, uh, than usual. But here we are, we're going to play five games today. And this is the time, this is a season where we are about to find out whether we can actually close in the gap between uh you know the eighth place or the tenth place right now currently we are sitting at 10th again our objective for this season uh by the board it's that we have to um uh, what do i have to do again oh we have to finish at the mid table so that's our goal but for us since we make quite a lot of changes to the squad of course we're trying to aim a little bit higher and today we are playing against arsenal in the first game right here they're currently uh, three points behind from me or from uh, from brighton so winning this game could be crucial for us but right here 80 minutes in we pretty much didn't really have much going on in this game but the only thing that we can do right here is just trying to defend not to lose at this point and billy gilmore for some reason is playing against us i'm pretty sure it's not allowed in real life but uh i don't know why fifa will allow something like that to happen but later on holy crap Martin Odegaard just got that one in just perfectly. A free kick, at least 25 to 30 yards out. And Robert Sanchez has no chance to uh, to save that one. But we still have approximately 20 seconds to play. Here comes Sesco to close check in the middle. Looking for a pass right here. And he sees uh, Alex Scott. But Tommy Yasuo was right there at the right time. Unless or else that would have been a perfect pass right there to a potentially scoring that equalizer, but unfortunately didn't really quite happen. But we lost Arsenal. We lost Arsenal one nothing, which means that we are six points away from Arsenal, which means the fact that they're more likely to claim the seventh or eighth spot. Of course, nobody was expecting us to be playing in any of the Euro European competition next season, but our we have our, our, we have our own standard, uh, despite the board wanted us to finish mid-table. Um, I certainly do wanna uh, finish a little bit slightly higher, but it's tough. You have Arsenal and then later on, Right here, you have Liverpool, but this time we are at home at Amax Stadium. Again, it is going to be another big game for us. Try we we made a lot of signings in the second half or during during the uh, during the January transfer window, which means that we should be making or we should our squad should be you know be better in a lot of ways. And here comes Sesco right here, and finally playing i don't know 30 plus games finally getting a penalty and this time allison came out rushing and uh took uh took close check that i think took sesco down and right here this is a new system for fifa it's the way how uh, i don't know if i like it but it seems all right but that was a very good penalty allison should have done slightly better in terms of the timing but we are leading the game one nothing against liverpool before half time and moving on pretty much to the second half right here 45 minutes in uh here comes a corner kick uh, not a corner from free kick 46 minutes in we just couldn't really clear the ball for some reason and just like that that's the part where i'm actually get frustrated is because we are not very good at dealing with set pieces which i did address in the last game because i think the some of the goals at least we we conceded more than six goals from from not quite of a direct free kick but some some sometimes in indirect set piece as well and later on five minutes after the halftime nunez scores that one uh two one just just annoying and later on this is horrible mo salah got that one then and trossa didn't even bother to uh try to make a jump with not even trying to make an effort i don't know is it because the game trying to make the set piece uh, system a little bit more complicated than usual but what i'm seeing it's it is it is and later on 85 minutes in conceded another one fourth one today again uh at that point just kind of lost lost my head but losing 4-1 was definitely not fun at all guys i'm telling you and we are looking at the uh, youth report again seems to be um the youth report seems to be dying down a slightly bit don't know if I like it or not because uh, I think when we started this series, we have at least 
I'm telling you, at least six players in the academy for like a month or two. And later on right now, we only have three three players left. And the only noticeable one is actually, was it Nicholson? If I, uh, actually not Nicholson, I think it was like Nicole or something like that. I don't, I don't know, Peter, Peter something. Seems to be a good one. 85 has a, having a potential uh, range from 85 to 91 with a uh, current uh, overall uh, 61. Again, looks pretty good again, but we signed a new goalkeeper over the January transfer window, so we don't need that. And we are playing against Leeds United away this time. Here comes Casado looking for host check in the middle. But again, a uh, very tight defending by Leeds. But not very tight in terms of the wide area. Here comes Lent driven down in the middle to Trossard. And he takes that one personally. And we score the first goal just like that. Five minutes before the break. Very good finish. But more importantly, what a great impressive run by Lamptey to convert that one into one nothing. And right before halftime right here, we just have to bite ourselves in the foot. And here comes Leeds United. Poor save by Robert Sanchez. Just simply, he was moving away from the ball. And just like that, Leeds equalized right before halftime. And that's even more bugging as usual. 47 minutes in, we are looking to change the course of action. Here comes Nicholson on the left-hand side. Seems to be have a lot of space on, on the flank area, dribbling around the player. Here comes Trossad to Sesco. Great finish right there. Just kind of uh, didn't really have time to think, but more uh, but more time to, to, to react at that point. But that was a very good finish. And later on, we're trying to add slightly a little bit more into the uh, into the game right here. 79 minutes, and here comes Lampi on the right-hand side. Seems to be uh, quite a lot of space in the middle. Here comes Sesco, just puts that one in, <laughs> buries that one. 2-1, actually 3-1. Sesco, finally, he, he is arriving. He is getting his groove together. He's getting his, his stuff together. He is getting more familiar with the lead right now, which, again, uh, he is more favorable than Ondap at this point. But unfortunately, we just have to keep conceding at the un unfavorably timing. And pretty much it was two minutes, uh, approximately two minutes before uh, before the game. And I'm right here moving on to the next game against Bournemouth. Away from home seems to be, seems to be a very uh, easy game right there. Seems to be. And here comes Undav again. The question about Undav. Whether he still has a place here at the club. Of course, he still has. But currently, Sesco is definitely more favorable in order to win anything, to be honest. And right here, uh, of course, at the same time, we are looking at a new graphics right here. Not quite of a new I, uh, It is quite of a new graphic. I don't, I, I don't see that very often, to be honest. But this is something that is very cool. To show up is just the uh, the fans coming into the stadium, showing the tickets. I, I like that very much. But again, there are certain times where you just kind of feel like, you know, it's overplayed. You know, you saw it once. It's great. It's cool. But after once, you just don't, you just don't quite want to see it again in, in that occasion. But anyway, it is it, it is just a new type of uh, just a new type of graphics. I certainly enjoy that. You don't see that a lot in PS4. I, I doubt you have any, uh, any, um, uh, uh, and impress any any impressive. Uh, cutscene, you don't quite see that very often. But Sesco right here continues his fine form and, of course, showing why he should be starting every day over Undav. And what a great finish right there. Just slams that one behind the home, uh, behind the uh, the goal. one nothing was the final score in that game. Finally cl keeping clean sheet. I believe that was the second clean sheet that we have so far in this season. But we are looking to get... A little bit more clean sheets in the next season, but right now we can't really fix our defense in a lot of ways. But right now we are playing our fifth game of the series or, or of the episode against Crystal Palace. Away this time again, another big challenge as well. Crystal Palace is a very good team so far. Whatever Vieira has done for the team has been amazing, to be honest. I think Anderson, especially in the back line, is very impressive. The way he can play. The ball with his feet is very impressive. And of course, you have Rilfa Saha as well. He has been linked with Arsenal for so many times uh, in the past. And who remembers uh, Joaquin Anderson back in um, my Fulham career? I don't think it was a regular starter, but he was more of a backup. And yeah, I did sell him. I'm, I'm sure of that. 25 minutes in. 
uh, 25 minutes after the kickoff and we're struggling already 26 minutes in we just couldn't really get the ball off the players and robert sanchez another very a very doubtful save right there it's just uh, uh when you look at the replay doesn't look pretty he seems to be diving another way and that's how we concede the first goal later on 38 minutes in here comes a counter attack here comes sesco seeing close check in the middle and just buries that one and what a great goal under the bar as well and we tie the game just like that 1-1 one, one. i feel like sesco and also close check both of them are forming a very important friendship and at the same time a very important relationship between those two actually not relationship it's actually partnership to be honest 59 minutes in here comes an inside run to Olias Oliz and of course we just couldn't really get the ball off and then Korchop decided to stuck his foot right there and it is a penalty clear penalty I, I I don't even I don't even have a say to it and here comes Wolf of Saha and look at that penalty right there what a great penalty inside of netting uh, of the right hand side and they have taken a 2-1 lead so far. 75 minutes in, we still have time to come back, to make a statement, to show why Brighton is coming back to their finest form, even though we, we don't really quite have a fine form. Here comes a stoop on the left hand side, crosses in the middle, the whole check, and poor, poor goalkeeping right there. Should have come out slightly earlier, but whole check is right there to make, uh, to, 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 um, to score that one 89 minutes in last last minute of the game how can you not sign off this episode with a last minute last minute winner by Mulder and we have won this game 3-2 surely we have won this game 3-2 what a great great entrance by Mulder again he doesn't get a lot of chances so far this season but every time when he comes on very very reliable at times and right here this was the final score 3-2 and what a great way to end the uh, to end the game uh, with a last minute winner. I wish I could see more of that in this season, but season coming to an end pretty much, unfortunately. Uh, Man City, Spurs, Liverpool, and Chelsea are currently top four. And for us, we are currently, uh, you guys can say we are four points away from getting a European trophy. We still need to be beat Wolves at uh, at this point. And Arsenal is currently three points ahead of us. Honestly, I felt like that game should have probably get at least a point or two. But look at us defensively. We we allowed six, 63 goals in total. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure we have the most, if not the second most, if not top three in terms of conceding a lot of goals. But you know what? It is what it is. Oh, actually, Crystal Palace was the only uh, was the only team that potentially could be get relegated at this point. To be honest, twenty five points, Leeds United, Southampton, and also Crystal Palace are the bottom three. We still have approximately four to five games to go. But uh, yeah, uh, the, uh, the episode tomorrow will be the season finale of season one. Can wait where we are going to end up at in the first season again i don't think it's very successful but the signings will make us very successful in later on in the uh, in the series so thank you guys for watching hope you guys enjoyed this video like this video subscribe to my channel and i'll see you guys in a bit